Hey, it's Thomas DeLauer, and today I want to talk about salt. You see, we're constantly hearing that salt is this bad thing, that it's going to raise our blood pressure, and that it's horrible. Well, the simple thing is that salt is important, and I wanted to do this video to give you five good reasons that you should be making sure that you get enough salt in your diet, especially if you're active. You see, our bodies crave salt when we need it. If you've ever worked out really hard and sweated a lot, or you've drank too much water and urinated a lot, you've found that a lot of times you end up craving salt more than usual. It's because your body is really good at telling you that it needs the extra salt when it's necessary. And at the end of the day, it's not always about having too much salt, it's more about having the balance between sodium and potassium. There have actually been a lot of studies lately that have shown that there are almost just as many issues with not consuming enough sodium as there are issues with consuming too much sodium. You see, the recommended daily allowance of sodium right now is down to about 2.3 grams or 2,300 milligrams per day. That's really not all that much, especially when you take a look at some of these recent studies. In fact, a recent study that took 100,000 people found that blood pressure issues didn't really come into play until people were consuming more than 5 grams or 5,000 milligrams of sodium per day. Now, that's not the end-all be-all, that isn't true for everybody, but in this double-blind study, that's the way that it came out. Now, there were moderate blood pressure issues around 3 to 4 grams per day, and really didn't start to see any increase until you were really pushing 3 anyway. So it's a little bit of a gray area as to what that tolerable upper level is on a day-to-day -day basis. But let's dive right in and talk about the five main benefits of salt, since nobody else is talking about them. The number five reason you need to make sure that you're getting enough sodium is fluid balance and cardiovascular health. You see, sodium is a huge part of what is called extracellular fluid, and that helps with what is called tissue perfusion. So basically, your cells are kind of breathing. They constantly have this influx and basically movement of water in and out of the cell. If you don't have that sodium balance, then that doesn't happen effectively. And when that doesn't happen effectively, it can affect your circulatory system and it can affect your heart in a number of ways. So it's important that you make sure you're getting enough salt so that that tissue balance and that extracellular water stays where it needs to be so the heart can pump easily and the blood can flow where it needs to flow. The number four reason is simply your neural function. You see, your nervous system and sodium work very close together. See, a lot of times when neurons are firing, when your brain is sending messages, what's happening is concentrations of sodium and chloride are constantly changing. And you see, we have to look, salt is made up of sodium and chloride. So these constant changing values are what really allow your brain to tell your body what to do. In a sense, without sodium, the neurons cannot fire and your brain will not be able to communicate effectively so your body won't be able to move right. That's why sometimes after a workout, when you sweat a whole lot, you'll cramp up. It's because the nervous system doesn't really know how to fire properly at that point in time. So very critical, especially after a workout, that you get enough salt in. The number three reason you want to make sure that you're getting enough salt in your diet is digestion. And this is one that people don't really talk about a whole lot. You don't think salt, you don't really connect it with digestion. But what happens is salt helps the transfer of chloride ions into the hydrochloric acid within the stomach. And that hydrochloric acid is what helps you digest. And that hydrochloric acid is also going to be what prevents you from contracting a foodborne illness. So a lot of times making sure that you get enough salt can literally keep you from getting sick. It also preserves a lot of things. If you think back in uh, olden times, what we used to always do is preserve our meats in salt. It definitely has an antibacterial, antimicrobial property, and that still takes effect even within your digestive system. The number two reason that salt is so important comes down to your mood. And it kind of ties back in with number three when we were talking about the neural response, but it has to do specifically with your brain. In fact, in a 2010 study, it was found that those that consumed less than 1,500 milligrams of sodium had a significant decrease in their mood compared to those that didn't. And again, it comes right back to the neurons not being able to fire properly. If your brain isn't functioning right, your nervous system isn't functioning right, not only does your body not listen, but other parts of your brain don't listen. And this can make it so you feel down, so you don't have motivation, so you feel a little bit more lethargic than you ordinarily would. A lot of people wouldn't make that connection with simple old salt. Lastly, it comes down to simple minerals, the number one reason. And it's so simple that a lot of times we overlook it. Salt isn't just salt. 
we're not talking about just going out and immediately consuming a bunch of sodium. We're talking about good, healthy salt that contains a lot of different trace minerals. So if you're consuming a salt like Himalayan pink salt or some really good, solid, high quality sea salt, you're retrieving a lot of other minerals. You see, when you consume regular table salt, it usually is iodized. It's got iodine added into it. A lot of times it has a lot of other chemicals added into it. But if you're eating good, solid salt from the earth, you're going to get a lot of those trace minerals that play so many critical parts to your day-to-day -day life. Things like chromium, things like iodine, things that are gonna help you digest, things that are gonna help boost the metabolism. So at the end of the day, my tip to you is this. Rather than forcing yourself to remove sodium from your diet, or really struggling hard to find low sodium foods all over the place, just try to eat a balanced diet that's going to get you enough in the way of potassium so that you can have that healthy mineral balance. Because remember, sodium and potassium are working together, and it's all about a ratio. So if you can keep that ratio in line, you're gonna feel great. As always, keep it locked in here on my videos, and I will see you in the next one.